Please subscribe, like, and share. It really helps us out. And of course, if you have any questions, comment below and we will answer you as soon as we can. Welcome to this video in our series on IGCSE and O-Level Accounting. Today we are going to learn about business documents and books of prime entry. If you haven't seen our previous videos, click on the card above. One of the fundamental things we learn about is business documents and books of prime entry. Firstly, business documents. Business documents are sources of information that prove that a transaction occurred. Let's go through a list of business documents and the transaction or uses of that document. Firstly, invoices. These prove or record credit purchases and sales. Next, credit notes. This records the returning of goods by credit customers or to credit suppliers. Debit note. This is when an original invoice to a credit customer or from a credit supplier is undercharged. Receipts. This records cash purchases and sales and acknowledgement of payment. Payment voucher. This records payment to creditors. Petty cash voucher. This records payment through petty cash. Check counterfoil. This is the portion of checks that are kept by the payers. Bank statement. These are the records or proof of deposits or payments through the business bank account. Paying in slip. This is the deposit slip for depositing checks or cash into the bank. Next, let's look at the books of prime entry. These are also known as date books, books of original entry and journals. These are the first books of entry where a business records its transactions. We will look at the types of books of prime entry and what transactions are recorded. Sales journal. The transaction recorded here is credit sales of goods. Sales return journal. Transactions recorded here are returning of goods by credit customers. Purchase journal. The transaction here are the credit purchase of goods. Purchase return journal. The transactions recorded here are returning of goods to credit suppliers. Cash book. Here we record cash and bank transactions. Petty cash book. This is for the recording of petty cash transactions. General journal. This is the catch-all. It records all transactions not recorded in the above journals. Let's go through some examples. First, trade discounts and cash discounts. Trade discounts are discounts given to encourage customers to buy in bulk. There is no double entry for trade discounts. Here is our example. Company Y sold goods on credit to customer Z at a list price of $500 less 10% trade discount. The net price of goods sold equals 500 times 90%. This equals $450. How do we record this? The answer is debit trade receivables for customer Z by $450. Credit sales by $450. Next, cash discounts. These are discounts given to encourage customers to pay promptly. Cash discounts are recorded as follows, discount is given to trade receivables. Let's look at an example. Trade receivables X paid $500 owing by check after deducting 5% cash discount. Our answer would be, debit discount allowed $25, which is 5% of $500. Then, debit bank $475, which is the $500 minus $25. Credit trade receivables X by $500. Another thing to look at would be, a discount received from trade payables. An example could be, paid $800 owed to trade payables Y by check after 10% cash discount. The answer to this problem would be, debit trade payables Y by $800. Credit discount received by $80, this being $800 by 10%. Credit the bank by $720, this being the $800 minus $80. Next, let's have a look at the general journal. Looking at the general format, a transaction can have more than one debit account or credit account. The total amount debited must be equal to the total amount credited. 
the narration is a short description of the transaction so we can remember details later. There are also special journals. Some of the features are, transactions of similar nature are recorded together. Only the total amount in a special journal is posted to the general ledger. So, what are the advantages or purposes of these? They enable easy retrieval of information. It avoids overcrowding in the general ledger. It can increase efficiency and productivity. Examples of these journals are as follows. Sales Journal The double entry would be to debit sales ledger and credit sales. Sales Return Journal The entry would be debit sales return and credit sales ledger. Purchase Journal The entry would be debit purchases and credit purchase ledger. Purchase Return Journal The entry would be to debit the purchase ledger and credit purchase return. Now let's look at the cash book or specifically interpreting three column cash book. Okay, let's look at an example. On January 28, $200 was debited to the cash account and credited from the bank account. This represents the withdrawal of funds from the bank account for office use. The balance brought down on February 1st is cash account $270 debit, so a current asset. Bank account $30 credit, so current liability minus bank overdraft. Now let's look at the petty cash book. Petty cash is a small amount of cash kept in the office to pay for minor recurring expenditures. Petty cash books are used to record transactions involving petty cash funds. An impress system is a system for maintaining the petty cash fund. The key features are, a fixed sum called impressed amount or float is maintained, and the petty cash fund is reimbursed after making approved payments. The advantages are to provide internal control and to avoid overcrowding of the cash book. How does the double entry work? The first example is to set up a petty cash fund. We debit petty cash and credit bank or cash. The next example, reimburse petty cash funds. We debit expenses and credit bank or cash. Moving on, interpreting petty cash books. Double entry for reimbursement of petty cash fund on 1st of February. Debit stationary expenses, $17. Travel expenses, $16. Postage expenses, $3. Sundry expenses, $35. Credit bank, $71. Thank you for watching our video. Please like, subscribe and share. And comment below so we can clarify things for you.